Hey guys, welcome to my video and this video is a part two of the home lab series. So last week you guys saw me uh, rack mount my server, uh, rack mount some of the CCNA equipment, so some of the equipment that I'm going to use to study for my CCNA. I am planning to take the CCNA by the end of this year. Um, I decided to push it to the end of this year because initially I wanted to take it in the beginning of the year, but I decided to push it to the end of the year because I have some something, something else came up, life. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just kidding. Some of the things in life came up and I have to get about three certificates um, before getting into my CCNA. So I'm going to use the first part of the year to get those certificates out of the way. And then at the end, almost the end of the year, I'm going to study for my CCNA equipment and try to get that out of the way. So in total, I'm, I'm planning to have about one, two, three, about four certificates this year. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> so that's why the CCNA has been pushed a little bit further down to the end of the year. But that's beside the point. For this video, we're going to talk about my server. So we have decided to turn the server into a type 1 hypervisor. And the program that I've decided to use for that is Proxmox. So in this video, we're going to talk about Proxmox. We're going to talk about installing Proxmox. We're not going to talk too much. We're not going to go into detail about uh, what Proxmox is and how to use it and all that stuff. That's probably going to come along in some other videos. But for this video, we're just going to talk about installing it and setting it up on a server. Uh, and to do that, you're going to need a USB. Um, you're going to need to go to the website, which I'm, going to, I'm putting up right now. Go to the website, download um, uh, the Proxmox, download Proxmox, and you need to bond it to the CD. Um, so you can use Rufus or you can use Etcher. I think it's called Etcher. <laughs> if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm going to have a link to it in the description box below. I'm going to show it on the screen as well. So you need one of those to uh, bond the, US, uh, the ISO image to this USB. So you're going to need that first to be able to install Proxmox on the server. So make sure you get that out of the way. Uh, the other thing as well is that we're going to install iDRAC. iDRAC is like a remote control tool. It's like an onboard remote control um, tool that allows you to control the server, turn the server off, turn the server on. As long as you have power uh, and ethernet connected to the iDRAC board on the server, you can turn it off, turn it on, and do a whole bunch of stuff in it as well. That's another thing as well. So in this video, this video is pretty long. The video is long because, you know, it's it's raw, it's unbeautified. I don't try to make it pretty and all that stuff because IT is not all about that, right? IT is about going through problems and coming up with solutions. It, it always amazes me when you know, people post videos and they just like, you do this and you click this. And I know sometimes people don't want to see that, like the, the struggle, but you're going to run through struggles <laughs> when you're doing these things. And, and the beauty is not so much about, you know, oh, I fixed it. The beauty is about going through the, the struggle and learning from that and becoming better. So uh, this video is pretty long because of that. You're going to see me go through the whole thing, see me go through the bios, see me do this, see me do that. So. Uh, for those of you guys that are setting it up and running through similar problems that I'm running through, you have a solution for it. So that's why this video is pretty long. <laughs> so, and the video is also a little bit shaky because you have me moving around with my uh, camera. I'm a one man team. <laughs> so you have me moving around with my camera. So do keep that in mind. Um, so that's why the video is pretty shaky. Well, not, not pretty shaky, I'm sorry, but it's a little bit shaky uh, and uh, it's very long as well. So I thought it would be beneficial to someone that's going through the same process. So. Those are some of the things that I wanted to get out of the way before starting the video. So let's go ahead and let's um, let's dive into the video. Let the fun begin. Uh, the server is a 16 core server uh, and it has about 192 uh, GB of RAM, which is pretty good because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff from this. So one of the changes that I made uh, was this guy right here. Um, you have an optical drive that came with it. Let me see if I can grab that. Give me one second. So this is the optical drive that came with it. I'm never going to use it. So what I've done is I've removed it um, and I bought this stuff from Amazon. Uh, I'm going to disconnect it here for a second. I'm going to put this down. This is a USB. I'm going to need it in a minute, but I'm going to put that down so I can show you guys this. And by the way, this doesn't come enable. So we're going to go into the BIOS and enable the, the SATA um, drive here, the, the optical drive here. And we're going to enable this as well because we're going to need it. Now, the reason why we're going to need this is because if you look up front, right, the the server itself, let me just scoot down for, for a minute. The server itself has two USB connect on the front uh, and then there's no USB connect on the back of it. But um, I'm gonna need that keyboard and mouse because I'm not gonna use the KVM. Um, cause so ideally there is no extra port on the back of it. So we're gonna use this guy. Uh, this is what we're gonna use to uh, use the USB here that has um, Proxmox on it and we're going to install it here proxmox is going to be installed here and all of the drives on the front are just going to be used for like space on proxmox so 
we're going to need to enable this guy and this guy. But anyway, let's get back to what I was going to show you guys. So I'm going to disconnect this for a second so I can show you guys this. Um, there's a different one coming because this one seems pretty small. I'm going to show you why I think it, it, it why I say it's pretty small in a minute in terms of like the space up front. So the server came with this guy. This is a legit CD uh, optical drive, but I remove it because I'm never going to use it. And I'm making use of this guy to be able to use this to have Proxmox run on this SSD. And then again, the front, all the SAS drive on the front are just going to be used for space for my uh, Proxmox um, adventures. <laughs> um, so basically, all you got to do is... Um, it's so hard to be the same one recording, the same person recording, the same person trying to talk as well, sorry. Uh, so you're gonna do this here, you're gonna put that in there. Uh, the reason why I said that I'm gonna replace this in a minute, sorry guys, in a minute. Um, there's a new one coming that I bought off of Amazon. You can see there's some sort of space here. Uh, it's not as big as the optical drive that came with it, this guy. Uh, so because of that, there's some sort of space going on there on the forefront of it, so right here. So I bought another one that's that's on its way, and you can see it goes all the way in as well. I bought another one that's on its way, but for now, this would do when a new one comes. I'm just gonna replace it. There's nothing major there. So let's go ahead and reconnect that. I'm gonna go ahead. I have one hands here, so <laughs> uh, give me some time here. Oh boy, this is gonna be all I thought it would be. Okay, so I'm gonna have to kind of hold you guys here for a second. Hopefully this is not too shaky. Oh, that works. So we are going to, uh, if I can find it. There you go. So we're gonna connect that. So as I said, this, um, initially when you boot up, you're not gonna be able to see this because it's disabled. And also this guy is disabled as well. So let's go ahead and close the server because I don't want it to be making a whole bunch of noise. So let's go ahead and close the server and um, let's put it up. Okay guys, so um, everything is connected. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the server. Um, I'm gonna use the eye drag to turn it on. Um, so it's gonna get noisy on initial startup. Just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and put that up here. If I can get a hold of my mouse. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I just turned it on using eye drag. So it's coming on. So you see some stuff coming on in the, in the bias here. So um, initial configuration, these are some of the changes that I made. So I'm just waiting for it to show me to um, press F11. Now you can go ahead and start pressing F11. F11 taking to the bio setup um, before it boots up if you don't want to wait for it because sometimes <laughs> you just go ahead and pass. Uh, just keep in mind that it's not like a desktop where sometimes you have to press F11 over and over again. You can just hold down to it. So if you can see, I'm holding down to it now, F11. And it's gonna do its thing, it's gonna go through that. You don't have to do it now, but I don't like missing it, so I'm just gonna hold it. <laughs> so, give it some time. It's gonna go through a setup. Uh, this setup normally takes some time, by the way. So you can see, because I was holding on F11, it's telling me in here, it's entering BIOS Boot Manager, which is where we wanna go, right? So let's give it a couple of minutes. And let it do its thing. It take a while to do all of this stuff, so don't don't freak out if it's you know, doing this thing. Even without setting up anything, when you restart a server, normally it just it has, to, it has to go through like a whole bunch of checks. So it take take a sweet time to do everything that needs to get done. Um, as that's being done, I'm sure you guys on the, on the front here, you can see the lights coming up. Um, it's going through a couple of stuff, a couple of check here. Uh, showing you some of the things that I enable. Now I've enabled a lot of stuff on it already. I just want to kind of show you guys the process of enabling them because initially I told you guys that we're going to en enable the internal USB, we're going to enable the SATA because um, we need those two things, right? So let's let it do its stuff. It's going to go through a couple more stuff here. Uh, maybe I could just fast forward this. <laughs> maybe I just let it roll, roll on cut. <laughs> no, no cutting anything here. Just showing you guys all my failures <laughs> as, as we go along. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does work, it does work. So it's doing uh, initializing uh, firmware interface here. Give it a couple more seconds. If the, if um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to close the server, because if it was open, it would be so loud in here. Because 
at the server. The servers don't like it when you have them open when they're running. They get very touchy, very noisy about that. So just keep that in mind. Come on, just doing his stuff. All the lights up front are all the drive, the SAS driver doing their thing. A couple of settings that I'm going to change and we're going to go through them. I've already changed them, but we're going to go through them. I'm going to talk about them um, so you guys can be aware of them. Uh, one at a time, I'm going to turn them on. And after that, we're going to go through the Proxmarks. Uh, so a couple of things to keep in mind. I have two um, Ethernet cable connected through it. I can move this. It's a mess in here right now because I'm not completely done setting up everything yet. Uh, I have the Ethernet cable connected to one of the NICs. Uh, I have uh, the Ethernet cable connected to the iDRAC. Um, uh, Nick over there, the controller over there. So I have two connected to it right now. This is for iDRAC, uh, and then this one is for the um, the Ethernet, the Ethernet cable on the Nick card, the internet. So we need that for Proxmox because um, we're gonna need to assign an IP address and all that good stuff. So let's leave that there. Okay, the server is up, right? So um, for the most part, what we are going to need. As you can see here, so the way I'm navigating this is pretty straightforward. Nothing special. Up down for up down, right? Up down for up down. Enter to select and escape to go back. So basically, what we need to go into, we're gonna go into. We're not going to BIOS uh, uh, Unify Boot Manager or uh, Boot Menu. We're not going to BIOS Boot Menu yet. We're gonna go to uh, System Setup, not Utilities, uh, but System Setup. Click on Enter for me. And it's going to take us to the system setup. There's a lot of things in the system setup that we need to change. So you have uh, system BIOS, you have iDRAC settings, and you have device settings. Um, system BIOS, we can click on it to look at a couple of stuff right now. But I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to talk about that yet. I, actually, you know what? Let's talk about that. So a couple of things here. So remember I told you that the two things that we're going to need to enable, right? Um, we'll click enter here for for SATR. So that's the SATR is this guy up front here. We're going to need to enable that. When it came, it was disabled for me. So I need to enable it because again, we the we need the, the server to be able to see this guy so we can install Proxmox on it, right? Because remember, we're not installing Proxmox on any of these, right? We're going to do RAID 6, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. We're just going to install Proxmox on this guy. So we need the server to be able to see it. So if it's off, we need to turn it on. So it was off when I got it. So what I did, you come in here, you go to SATA settings, and this guy that you see right here said, um, at the time it says uh, off. So I go ahead and choose that, it's enable, uh, and that's pretty much all you need to do here for the server to be able to see the SATA drive. All right, you click escape, right? And then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go into integrated devices. That guy right there, we wanna click enter. Right, so for integrated devices, you're gonna come down here. This guy, as you can see, this one right here, it says internal USB port. That's the one that we talked about that was right here. The server is closed right now, you can't see it. That drive has Proxmox, Proxmox, Proxmox on it. <laughs> I can't say it right. That drive has Proxmox on it. I can I can never say, I'm African, man. I can't, I, half of the time I can't say things right, so don't blame me. <laughs> it has uh, the Proxmox on it. So we're gonna use that, and the reason why is because this other two um, USB drive up here, we're using the, the mouse and the keyboard. So we don't have any more USB. So we're gonna use that to install Proxmox on this, on the SATA drive here, right? So we need to turn that on because if it's off, again, the server is not gonna be able to see it. So you click on it, enter. It was off initially, so I turn it on, right? That's pretty much all you need to do here. Now, if you want to go ahead and change a couple of things, like for example, the integrated RAID controller, don't disable it or anything, but <laughs> if you do want to disable it and you're using software RAID instead of hardware RAID, have it the have fun with it. But for me, that's all I need at this point in time. So go back. So those are the two main things that we need to change in here. So next up, next next up <laughs> so my african accent is killing me today next up we'll go to idrac settings so remember the idrac is this guy back here so what this allow us to do 
is it allow us to one, access the server even though the server is off. As long as these two power cable are connected, we can go into this using a web interface and be able to turn the server off, turn the server on. That's what I did a couple of minutes ago when I turned the server on. Update the BIOS, do a whole bunch of stuff and I've showed you guys the, uh, this earlier. So for that, um, the initial things I've, I've not showed you, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. But for that, the initial thing that we want to do is we want to come in here because when it came, it was um the the ip address and everything on it was it wasn't my ip address it was set as static so it wasn't set at dhcp it wasn't picking up a new one which is the right way to do it because you don't want to set it at dhcp anyways so you want to go there you want to click enter and then you want to go you can change a whole bunch of settings in here but that's not what we're looking for again you can play around with this but be careful uh make sure you read a little bit for me myself I have to read a little bit to understand everything in here before making changes. So if you want to change more stuff, have it there, but make sure you, you know what you're doing. So <laughs> go up a little bit here. We want to go to network. That's what we're looking for. And then here, again, you can change a whole bunch of settings, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm going to go all the way down here and I'm looking for the IPv4 settings. So this is what we're looking for here. To be able to access it, there's two ways that you can do it. You can set it at DHCP enable which is not advisable because if this server was to go off for a while, the same thing has happened or the list is over and you know, your DHCP server, whatever is given DHCP in your network, will assign it a new IP address and you will have to physically come in here again to look at that IP address. And you have to do that every time a new IP address is assigned to this. So we don't want to do that. And that's why when the server initially arrived, it's it was set to static like 10 dot something dot something and of course i couldn't get into it because i had to change it in here so you go down there and you want to set a static ip address for it i would advise you if you're setting a static ip address for this one you have to go into whatever is assigning your dhcp and say hey listen this address um kind of belongs to the mac address of this guy so only assign this ip address to the mac address of this guy that's one way to do it another way to do it as well is to set a range so and that's advisable for, in my opinion that's i like doing that where you say <clears throat> when i'm setting up my dhcp uh, i want my dhcp to only assign ip address after 30. so from one one is normally your default gateway from one to 30 or from two so because one is always your default gateway or normally your default gateway you can choose one every one but it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of conventional now for you to use one as your default gateway. So you can say from 2 to 30, I don't want you to assign any IP address from 2 to 30. From 30 to 200 and whatever, you can assign IP address. So in that case, all of your devices that have static IP address in your network, you can assign them that range of IP address from 2 to 30. Uh, so your DHCP don't assign those IP address to anything else. So <clears throat> in my case, I like doing that. So that's the next thing that you're going to need to do, right? So once you do that, then you can, we, we'll be able to go to this IP address and we'll be able to access the iDRAX uh, 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 web interface and be able to control the server from there and see a whole bunch of information about the server. So once you're done with that, you can click exit. And another thing as well, for the password. So, <coughs> sorry for, for the cough. Um, for the password, now, if this iDRAC has already been configured or was configured before it was sent to you, which I think in my case, in my case, that was the case, um, they might have set a unique password to it. So you want to go and then reset it to default first before coming. I should have showed you guys that first before coming in here. Default first, so you can have that default password before coming in here and changing things. So nice okay so we got that going we we'll click escape you don't have to do anything here so here actually here is where the raid controller lives so if we go to device settings let's give it a couple of minutes it's going to show us the raid controller <coughs> and it's going to show us all of our man, i'm having a cough today and it's going to show us all of our nick on our um raid on our computer so all of the nicks you know, right here on the back or four of them that you see right here, one of them is being used right now. Now you can do like Nick teaming and all that stuff. It's gonna show us all of them here. And this is the RAID controller. So that's what we're looking for, we'll go in there, right? So for the RAID controller, 
So remember there are two types of RAID controller. Uh, there's a physical RAID controller which comes pre-configured on the server and then there's a software RAID controller. Um, last time when I was taking most of my exam, they say, hey, if you have a hardware RAID controller, always use that over a software RAID controller. So you go into controller management, right? Uh, you can see a whole bunch of stuff. You can change a whole bunch of stuff here. You can make a configuration to the RAID controller here if you want to, but we're not going to do that, right? Let's go back for a second, and then we're going to go to physical disk here, right? This will show us all of our physical disks. We can click something like this, <clears throat> and then we can see information of all of our disks. If we click on that, it will tell us all the information of our disk and all of that stuff. If we go into select physical disk here, you can click on that, you can click on that, and you can see all of the information about your disk here, and you can make it blink or unblink or whatever it is that you want to do. Some of the settings you can see in the iDRAC, iDRAC, and I'm going to show you guys that. You can see all of the settings there. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back here, and then we'll go to virtual here. And we're gonna say manage virtual. So I have decided to go with RAID 6. Now, uh, let me explain why I decided to go with RAID 6. So to better understand, I'm gonna come over here for a second, right? So RAID 0. So RAID 0 doesn't offer any redundancy, right? RAID 0, it offers speed in terms of like performance, in terms of everything else, the speed is there for RAID 0. But redundancy, if any of this drive was to fail in the future, you're out of luck because RAID 0 doesn't offer any sort of redundancy whatsoever. RAID 1 is mirroring. So that means that whatever you have here is basically copy here. Whatever you have here is basically copy here. Whatever you have here is basically copy here. So it's an exact copy. There's redundancy, but then there's not, it's not as fast as RAID 0. But you have that sense of redundancy where it's an exact mirror of a drive. So whatever drive you have is an exact mirror of the other one, right? Then there's RAID 5. RAID 5 allow you to have redundancy for one drive, right? What well, that means is that the parity is being written on this drive. So if one of your drive was to fail, or any drive the parity is being written on, if one of the drive was to fail, you have the ability to replace that one drive. However, RAID five has two downside to it or two you know bad things about it one you can only replace one drive so if two drive was to fill you add a lock right and then also when you replacing so let's say that this drive was to fail and you want to replace it when you're replacing it when you put in a new drive the computer have to do some calculation to calculate the parity and calculate all this other stuff to write to the new drive and write the data to the new drive so basically that means that the whole computer as a whole, the performance is a little bit slower. So that's the two things about um, RAID 5 there. You have one drive possibility to restore one drive. Also, it's a little bit slow in terms of restore. It might take a long time for you to restore a data over, right? So then there's RAID 6. RAID 6 is exactly like RAID 5. The only difference is RAID 6 allows you to have two drive failure. So RAID 5 allows you to have one, RAID 6 allows you to have two. So what that means is that if this fail is this fail, you're able to restore. Where in RAID 5, if this fails and this fail, you add a lock on one of them, on one of them because you can only restore one. RAID 6, you can restore both. But in terms of um, restoration, in terms of speed, it's exactly the same as RAID 5. If something was to happen, because the computer have to do calculation and do all this stuff to write to the, uh, uh, to the new disk, it might slow down the performance of um, the computer. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. And then there's RAID 10. RAID 10 is a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. So basically what that means is that you have the speed of RAID 0 and you have the redundancy of RAID 1. So in RAID 10, all of this, right, all of this, let's assume that all of this is going to be, no, no, no we're not going to assume, but let's, let's say, because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> let's say that all of this is going to be used for the RAID, right? And all of this is going to be used for your data. So you have an exact mirror right here. Mirror one, mirror one, this is mirror and this, this is mirror and this. So if something was to fail, you remove, you put in a new one. And because it's being a mirror, it's a lot more easy and quicker 
in terms of restoration when your drive fail and the computer has to write things to the other one because it's an exact mirror here so you're just copying it over so it's quicker it gives you speed but and also it gives you redundancy but the thing that you have to consider with rate 10 it's money <laughs> it's space so you're losing pretty much all of this right because you only have this because remember with rate 10 is an exact mirror of each one so that's one thing you have to keep with rate 10. so now that we talked about the different rate and the ones that I, I was i was at least considering i choose rate six right the reason being is that this is a lab environment yeah, it's not a production environment uh i don't care excessively about speed right as long as my stuff is working and then i have some sort of two redundancy here so basically with rate six i'm giving up this two and all of this I can use in terms of space. And I need that because I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff with this server. So what that means is that I'm gonna lose this two drive to the RAID, right? But that means that if something was to happen, I have the possibility to replace two of my drive. Now in terms of speed, uh, when it comes to the restoration, it might be slower, but again, for me, this is a lab environment. I don't really care if it takes like uh, <clears throat> the whole night to to do his thing or a couple of days to do his thing that's fine with me I'm not gonna die if I can't get to my lab as long as it's working but it's not working as fast as it needs to work that's fine I can be patient and I can wait and that's one of the reasons why I've decided to go with rate 6 for me because I need the space and rate 6 allow me to be able to use all of this space but still have some sort of redundancy on this ones here so with that being said that's why i've decided to go with raid six now you can go ahead and do whatever raid you want uh depending on your environment or whatever suits your need uh you can go ahead and say okay i'm gonna change it i'm gonna call it whatever i want actually you know what i'm gonna name this i forget to get my version i'm gonna call it i gig i gig knowledge Lab. All right, that's what we're gonna call our raid. So <laughs> it's the name of our raid, that's the name of our virtual disk or our raid or our setup right there. So that's what we're gonna call it. You can call it whatever you want, you can choose whatever raid type you want. Um, but I decided to go with raid six, and as I've done the explanation here, which was too long if you ask me, and <laughs> that's why I decided to go with raid six. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of there. And of course, here's where you can create a RAID. So if you didn't have a RAID, you can click on this guy and say create virtual disk. And it's going to ask you what RAID do you want to use? Um, how many of the disks do you want to use in the RAID? That kind of thing. So here's where you will create your RAID. So everything is pretty much good to go, right? We've set up our RAID. We choose RAID 6. We've set up our um, iDRAC to be able to connect to the server. Um, if it's off, but in general to be able to connect to the server and do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we've pretty much done everything that we have to do. We've enabled SATA, we've enabled the USB. So now the server is able to see the USB and the SATA. So we're gonna use the stuff in here to install it in here. We're looking good. So now we're gonna reboot the server and we're gonna tell the server to boot into this USB we're gonna say hey can you put into this USB for us because this is where our you know Proxmox uh, installation is right so let's get to it so we're gonna click escape there let's skip there let's skip there <coughs> all right we can click escape here it's gonna ask us do you want to exit we said yes that's fine and we don't need to do anything else. You can play around with the settings. You can do whatever you want to do. That's up to you. But we don't necessarily need to do anything else here. Click escape. You want to escape. You want to exit. You can say yes. And here we're going to press F11 again to go into boot menu. Or you can just let it do its thing. Just... We can let it just run through, do whatever it wants to do. And then once you give us the option, you don't have to press anything. And then it's going to tell you to press F11 to go to the boot menu where we were. We could have just went in there and then do it. But let's just let it, for experience sake, let's just let it do its thing. 
it's always it's always good to do it one to one to twenty times, if I may say so myself. Okay, so you see, it's gonna tell you that hey, I can't, I, I don't, I don't see anything. I don't, I can't find a boat menu. I mean, a boat device, no boat device available. That's fine. Um, so we're gonna go into this guy right here. We're gonna go into the boat manager. We're gonna click F11. Again, we could have done that, but that's fine. So now what we see here, we see the integrated NIC. That's not what we want. We want the hard drive C. So if you go in here and click on that, it's gonna give you a couple of options, right? USB. If you didn't enable what we went through earlier, you're not gonna see this, right? If you didn't enable what we have here, you're not gonna see this. You're most likely gonna see this because this is the RAID, but that's not what we want, right? This is just gonna be used for space. So what we want to do, we wanna say, hey, I want you to boot from the USB. It's a bit bright too, I don't know if you guys can see it, right? And click enter. That's where Proxmox is. All right, boom. Look at that, beautiful Proxmox settings. <laughs> so now uh, you can see install Proxmox, you can see install Proxmox V, debugging mood. Uh, you can do all of this stuff, um, test memory, legacy, but I, I don't wanna do all of that, I just wanna install it. You can go through all the settings if you want to, but we're just gonna install Proxmox here and it's doing its thing. And ideally, if we've done our homework, right, um, we're going to be able to see the the SATA drive and we're gonna tell it to install on the SATA drive and not on the RAID that we've set up. So Proxmox is doing its thing. Proxmox is a is a Linux type one hypervisor by the way. So I love Linux. <laughs> so I can't go wrong there. So it's loading. Okay, so we have to go to the agreements. There's a little bit of stuff on the corner here. You click agree. Uh, it's going to ask you to kind of do whatever. Please verify and selection target. You're going to click OK. Uh, down here, it's going to ask you, what do you want to use? So if you can see right now, it's trying to use my RAID. I don't want to use my RAID to install Proxmox, right? I want to use this guy. This is the SSD. So remember, if you do not enable, so that's why it's very important to enable uh, 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 the SATA drive the stuff that we went through earlier, because if you don't do that, the, the server will not be able to see it. It will only see the RAID, right? And it will not be able to see that either. So it's very important that you enable those two things, right? So now we select, we say, hey, we want to use our SSD, right? Not the RAID, but our SSD, right? And then we go ahead and click next. It's gonna access for our country. I live in Africa. I'm just kidding. I live in the U.S. <laughs> I live back home in Africa. <laughs> no, I live in the U.S. Uh, time zone. What time zone is it like for me? Uh, I got a second here. Where is it? Come on, baby. Uh, um, make it to Chicago. Chicago. Give me a second. Okay, uh, New York. See so, yeah, that. Like United States. US English, click next. Um, here is gonna ask you to type in a password, uh, create a password for your Proxmox server. It's very important that you remember this password, right? It's very important that you don't type any password in here <laughs> just because, um, so make sure you remember your password. I'm going to stop the video now and input this information because I need my hands. Um, and then once I'm done, I'm just gonna click next. So basically, uh, I'm gonna input it and then click next. So just. That's pretty much all for this section. I'm just gonna pause it because I need my hands to be able to do so, okay? Okay, so I went ahead and input the information, um, the password and everything else. Uh, here you can input anything that you want. It doesn't have to be a legit email or anything. Click next. Uh, this is very important. Uh, it's asking you what is the domain or the host name and all that stuff. Um, you can call this whatever you want. So here for IP address, it's actually the IP address. It's very important that you set this to a static IP address. So remember what we talked about the last time. For me, I have a list of IP address outside of my uh, DHCP list range or whatever you want to call it there. But it's very important for you to have something like that or go into your, your DHCP, whatever, your DHCP server, or whatever is assigning DHCP on your network and then say, hey, I want Proxmox. This DHCP stuff only belongs to Proxmox. Oh, whatever, something like that, and just exclude it so it doesn't get assigned a new IP address every time um, the DHCP list is over. So in my case, I'm just gonna 
change that and I will change this again but I'm gonna change that to a different one there and this one we can call it uh, okay this and click there and click next and it gives you a breakdown of the information there and then you just click install and it's going to go through its thing and it's going to install proxmox and once it's done it's going to give you a black screen and it's going to tell you like hey your proxmox is good to go you can access it on your network by going to the ip address and of course when you're there you are going to need your password right and then you're going to need the password that you set on the previous screen uh, and you're going to need of course the username which is root so uh, make sure your password is secure all of that good stuff uh, it's your internal network anyways not unless you let it any people come into your internal network and do some whole bunch of stuff so you should be good there so <laughs> um but it's always good to make sure your password is secure so we're gonna let it do its thing it's still if you do not have a hypervisor and you study in it i highly advise it it doesn't have to be a server as i again as i said i didn't start with a server i started with something very small um pretty soon i'll probably make a video of the one that i have which is in here in my tiny it closet and i transitioned from that to this thing here and this guy right here so but it doesn't have to be something big you can start small uh, i cannot tell you how instrumental uh, hypervisor and being able to install uh, a, a different os as quickly as possible without having to reformat a laptop and doing all of this stuff all of these things um has saved me in terms of like studying and, and being able to have experience hands-on experience with this thing so hands-on experience is a beautiful teacher man it's i love it it's it makes it makes you so much more confident when you're doing things at work um here i'm having one-on-one -on -one with you guys wow <laughs> proxmox is installing <laughs> anyways let's give it a couple of minutes here uh, maybe i'll fast forward it or do some of that editing magic to kind of get to it okay so it's telling you that hey it is done you can go ahead and access it here and you can reboot this too so if you reboot it uh it will go on and then it will show you this right and of course when you reboot you want to tell it to boot into the sky right so when it boots up you say hey boot into the sky so look at that it's done so let's go ahead and jump on the screen uh so we can take a look at it and then see how it, how it looks okay okay just two things um before we go and look at it i forgot to say this so number one do not forget to remove the usb so the usb that you used to install the usb that was in here remember the usb that was in here don't forget to remove it uh, and then of course don't forget to tell in it either way the server should be able to say hey this has some stuff on it let me put from this guy but if it's if for some reason you put it and say i can't find the boot device you need to go into the bios and tell it like hey always boot from this device first because this is where proxmox is installed and then once you do those two things and you can turn the usb stuff off again in the bios if you want to that's up to you um, <clears throat> once you do those two things uh it's gonna boot up and of course it's gonna give you the screen now you can log in here and again this is a linux um thing so you can log in here you can do all linux stuff um but it's going to give you the ip address the one that we set so you can see um for me i'm going to change that pretty soon but it's going to give you that and then you can go uh, onto your computer so uh, this might not be pretty i'm not doing a screen sharing i'm just going to close this so we look at it uh so you can do that and then what you want to do is on here if i can get a hold of my mouse is you want to put in the ip address that it tells you to put it tell, huh. <laughs> it tell oh man i can't speak today it tells you to put in there so the ip address that it shows you here the one that you set up on initial setup that's the ip address that you're going to put in here and then you're going to click enter it's going to tell you hey this is not secure of course it's not and you can secure one but it's not and you click advance and you click proceed and then just like that we have proxmox so now um you want to go ahead and put in your username and password and you should be able to log in uh, so i'm gonna pause the video here for a second just put in the credential and then we'll go. remember the credential the default username is root and then the 
or the username is root in the password is the password that you said when you were setting up the Proxmox server. So I'm gonna pause here for a second and put in this information. Okay, so once you input that information and you log in, you're gonna see your setup, you're going to see whatever it is that you call your domain. In my case, I call it like Geek Knowledge. And you can look at the summary, you can see your space, you can see your memory space, you can see your um, RAM space. Look at all that RAM, boys. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, you can see your space here. And this is where you will add stuff, like add a VM and do all of this other stuff. And uh, it just, it gets fun, man. It gets, having this stuff is just amazing. You know, you can look at the summary on the top level. It tells you everything that you need to know. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, so pretty much this is it for this video, right? Uh, so we've done a lot, this video. This is, this is a long video, but we've done a lot. So yeah.